I started in 2012, a uh, couple buildings down, and um, yeah, I worked for a fair while on my own. I was kind of lonely. <laughs> BJ came along and he started working with me. He joined Gustafson Custom Horns, and then we operated at that up until when we formed in 2018, 2019. Joe and Richard came along and we just combined all three businesses at that point. It kind of happened organically and it just seemed natural. Today is, is probably servicing and overhauls, regular servicing, probably mostly flutes for me. Fully pulling them apart, cleaning them up and then um, regulating them and making, making them work properly. A recommendation for a service, a general service, is every 12 to 18 months, depending on how much you play. That will change the head cork out, which can, you know, accumulate moisture and mould and also, you know, keep the mechanisms at um, optimal working condition. I joined Consortium Music from the start and I came on board as an owner and, um, and running the shop as well as being repairer. My specialty is in brass instruments. Uh, I like to focus on historical brass instruments, old brass instruments as a passion that's led through as some of my repair work here at the shop. And I'm also trained in day-to-day -day servicing of school instruments and specialty brass instruments all the way from tubers to tiny little trumpets. Ever since 2007, I've been the Australian agent for Howarth Oboes and um, Moosman Bassoons. Oh, I think it's generally agreed amongst technicians that oboes are the, the most uh, finicky and difficult instruments to get right, maybe piccolos as well, but the smaller the instrument, the more crucial it is to have everything perfect. But if a bassoon's a bit leaky, it'll still work fabulous. If, a, if an oboe's slightly leaky, it's a disaster. For my work every day, that, they're the biggest challenge. People often can't find a mouthpiece on the market that wants to serve their purpose, so I'll, I'll take a mold of the mouthpiece that they're using. They might have a preference of a rim size, a, a throat size, a backboard, a cup, and then I'll make a custom one built based upon what they want. What I like about it is working with the musicians closely. For a clarinet service, we budget three hours. For an oboe service, we budget five. and almost never takes five. It takes longer, particularly if we've never seen the instrument before. But that, that's for a full service, which means taking all the keys off and cleaning all the old oil out, re, you know, replacing whatever corks and everything's needed. That, that's a pretty time-consuming job. Saxophones, for instance, uh, there will be makes that aren't made anymore or models that aren't made anymore and you can't buy replacement necks for them or replacement keys. So oftentimes I'm asked to make a replacement neck for it, so I'll take measurements off of the old one and then I'll remake that from scratch. There's a lot of skills that cross over into metal smithing and plumbing as well as acoustics and engineering and chemistry. <laughs> There's something special in um, restoring someone's instrument that they've had as a child or they've, it's been passed down to them. Making that instrument live again and being able to be played and uh, keep it going in the family. Uh, and it's great to be able to do that here. All the way from making it play again, doing a valve job, getting the valves working perfectly and replating it and making it look um, perfect as if it came straight off the factory floor from whenever it was made. I don't want the business to end when I die or leave. I want it to continue on and we put a lot of work into it and I want to make sure that it continues to move forward, so yeah.